So as many of you will know already, the Triumph Rocket 3 comes in two variants. The R, which is the more aggressive muscle bike kind of setup, and then you've got this, the GT, which is a bit more easygoing and laid back. And on paper, I'd probably say I was an R kind of guy. But having borrowed this for two weeks, it's changed my mind. I think this is the better bike, the more versatile bike, and so in today's video I'll tell you why. We'll take it for a little ride and I'll show you what it's like on the road, and then I'll tell you one of the things I would change about it. But before we get started, started if you're new here and you want to see more reviews like this plenty of great triumph content coming up over the next few weeks then please do remember to hit subscribe a quick comparison of the two bikes though the fundamental spec is the same so you get that two and a half liter triple which is the biggest production motorcycle engine on the market at the moment and it makes more torque than any other bike at 221 newton meters the chassis and the dimensions are basically identical show of forks brembo brakes and there's loads of electronics too which is common to both bikes where they do vary is the bar position so this GT has more kind of sat up further back bars and you do get a little fly screen as well there although it doesn't deflect much wind but it does sort of suit the style of this bike you get a backrest for the passenger as well so that makes it much better in terms of comfort for them and then you get forward position foot pegs so there are two positions on this bike forward position on the GT and mid position on the R they might sound like minor differences but actually changing the bars and foot peg position it really does transform what it feels like to ride it transforms the character of the bike and you only have to look at something like the Bobber and Speedmaster. Essentially the same bike but the Speedmaster has those swept back beach bars and it does give it a much more easygoing laid back feel. And those equipment changes on this GT model turn it into more of a bike of two halves so yes you can definitely cruise and tour on this bike. Obviously it's not as fully featured as something like a Goldwing with a massive fairing, loads of built in luggage and all that kind of thing but for a weekend getaway I think it's pretty good. I mean, the riding position is all day comfortable. There's a nice amount of padding in the seat. It's not super high. You can stretch your legs out on the motorway and then your back is pretty much upright and you don't have to reach forward to the bars. It's also excellent for a passenger as well. So not only is the seat well padded as well, those little foldy down foot pegs are in a nice position, not too cramped, but the backrest, you know, especially on a bike that puts out 221 newton meters of peak torque, you might feel like you're gonna fly off the back sometimes. And so that little backrest just adds that bit of security and peace of mind for the passenger. It is adjustable as well up and down by a few inches so you can really dial it in so that you get a nice comfortable bit of pressure on your lower back. And I've got to say as well it is a proper good two up bike for the rider. You barely notice that anybody's on the back. You know what it can be like on a smaller bike you can really feel it jacking up when someone's on the back there but on this you've got a, like a hand knob for a preload adjuster so it's really easy to set that quickly. But I think it's the length of it and the size of it with the engine and it's so huge at the front that really it doesn't squat down at the back at all. Combine that with like the ridiculous amount of torque that you've got on tap, there's easily enough power and mid-range for two up riding with a bit of luggage and of course it's really nice and smooth as well so it just makes for a perfect bike for those motorway stretches, decent distances. I didn't really feel a great deal of fatigue apart from you know obviously some wind blast from not having a great deal of wind protection but otherwise I could ride on it plenty. Now it's not that you couldn't do that sort of thing on the R but you would be reaching further forward for those flat bars. After a while that's going to take its toll on your lower back and of course the passenger without that backrest is going to feel a little more precarious sitting on the back there. But what I absolutely love about the Rocket 3 GT is that it's not just like a big, long, heavy, flabby cruiser. They've tried to make a bike that performs as well, so you've got adjustable suspension so you can dial it in for your weight and your riding style. The Brembo style lemmas at the front, there's lots of power there. Of course, with like a 300 kilogram bike, it's not going to feel super sort of sharp on the initial bite there. There's a lot of weight to stop, but when you need them and you're pushing on a bit and you're rolling into a corner quite quickly, uh, there's definitely enough power there. You've got all the electronics you need, you know, lean sensitive rider aids, everything that you could need to stop you getting into trouble if you are pushing on a bit. And of course that big 2500 cc triple really does deliver when you wind it on. There's so much power there. It really doesn't feel like a heavy bike. It can just accelerate like, well, it blows your mind a bit. I think I better show you. So let's take it out for a little ride. I mean, 
the mad thing about this bike is you don't really need to give it that much in terms of revs to get the most out of it. That peak torque figure of 221 newton meters, uh, it makes it a 4,000. So on the road, you know, you're riding in that rev range most of the time. In fact, it only revs up to 6,000 and up there it's making about 165 horsepower. But I mean, you don't need to push it like that. Gosh, I'm not sure how much of the exhaust note you're getting through the mic in my helmet, but it's got a really nice burble once you're off the throttle as you're decelerating. But you'd look at it and expect it to be a big, wallowy, soft kind of thing, especially in this GT spec. But it really isn't, you know, it's confidence inspiring when you're going through the turns. It doesn't kind of wander wide or anything. It holds this line. And like I say, the brakes are better than other big heavyweight cruisers I've ridden. And Taurus, to be fair. A good comparison would probably be the BMW R18, you know, another European designed, large capacity, slightly daft cruiser type bike. But that's really focusing on that kind of heritage vibe the old school looks and the rattle of that big boxer twin trying for gone a totally different route with this bike and it's just like a, a blown up gigantic speed triple or something like that in the spec and the the way the engine feels and sounds but for me the position of the bars on this gt model is just absolutely spot on perhaps because i'm not super tall so reaching forward for the flatter bars on the r is uh, you know a tiny stretch whereas this is just super comfy oh my goodness oh, oh gosh never gets old accelerating on this bike two weeks in and i'm still absolutely loving it <laughs> but I did say I might change one thing on this bike and that's the foot peg position so at the dealer you can spec it with either the mid position pegs or the forward pegs even though the R comes with the mid position as standard and the GT comes with the forward ones you could feasibly have mid pegs on this GT model like I said I'm not particularly tall so it's just a little bit more of a stretch to the pegs than I'm kind of comfortable with and then of course the foot controls are at my full reach as well pretty much so I just feel like the mid position pegs would you know they'd be more comfortable for my stubby little legs the other thing as well with forward controls is like I just don't feel like you can support the weight of your body in the same way let's say you've got a bit of a rough road surface ahead and you just want to lift your bum off the seat momentarily to avoid getting like a big jolt up your spine then the only option really with forward pegs at my height anyway is to pull on the bars a bit with the mid position pegs you can just you know stand up on it a little bit and i reckon for me that would be the ideal combo gt bars are foot pegs Don't take it back, Triumph. Just another week will do. 
that's it for the Rocket 3 GT. What an incredible bike. I have to say as well, a bit of a dream bike for me, although at 20 grand it is a bit out of budget and I'm not sure if I could run it as my only bike. I think I'd need something alongside it that's a bit smaller, more nimble and agile for those sort of like weekend rides and stuff. Also for just like practically getting about, it is quite big to maneuver. It is a big heavy thing when you're walking it around a car park, but you know, all those things aside, it must be an incredible bike to own. Let me know if you've got any questions about it down in the comments below and I'll try and jump in and answer them. And if you're new here and you want to see more videos like this, hit subscribe and I'll catch you next time.